So let's see how to debug and monitor AJAX requests on browser. It's basically on IE11. Here's a simple AJAX request. Uh, it's post type. Uh, since it's a uh, AJAX request, that means the request will be sent to the server. So we need a server side application. Uh, here I'm using ASP.NET MVC. Here's the server side code. Uh, the name of my controller is home and the uh, action name is AJAX. So the URL will be home slash AJAX. Uh, so I'm not going to explain this code because this tutorial is not about uh, how to write code, uh, how to write AJAX request in J JavaScript. Uh, this tutorial is about how to debug and monitor your AJAX requests. This request is about to send uh, uh, some data to the server and the server will <laughs> respond with some simple string and will uh, display the string using the alert. This AJAX post request body consists of two key value pairs and then goes to me and location goes to Dhaka. So let's run the code. After a successful response from the server, uh, the JavaScript displays the response string with the alert message. Let's monitor that AJAX request. Uh, to see the network traffic, uh, let's click on this icon. And the very much important thing is we have to enable the network traffic capturing to monitor the to capture and monitor the edges and any other uh, request that we send from the browser to the server. If we don't enable that uh, network profiler, nothing will be want captured. So let's enable the network profiler. Let's refresh the page. Yes, we can see two to network traffic. The first one is for the main request to the server, and second one happened uh, by the JavaScript AJAX request. So let's see in detail about that AJAX request. Here's the request header. Uh, it contains the summary data. As it is very, the very consists the key value pairs, and this is me, location equals to Dhaka. This is the response header, uh, the response came back from the server. And here is the response body. A simple string consists of the server date time, and the name value, and the location value. Here's the cookies that uh, created on this uh, browser. There's nothing. It's been sure. I don't know about it. And this tab about the timings uh, of the of that request. Here's all the um, steps of this request and the time consumed. Uh, it's down. And the description of the every step is mentioned here. And here's the graphical representation of the entire uh, request process. You can see that it was waited for 109 milliseconds before starting the request, and the total 161 milliseconds taken to complete that request. Uh, so, and if you want to save the whole request details uh, in XML file, then you can click on that uh, icon to save the whole request. And here, and it's, here's an uh, important thing that if you want to clear the browser cache, uh, because 
you change something on the JS code or the CSS file, but you don't have that change effect on the browser, then maybe it's caused because of the caching of the browser. To clear that, you have to clear, you have to click on the button to clear all the caches. And uh, here's another important button clear entries on navigate. When you refresh the page, it clears the previous records and, and listed down all the current requests. If you want the previous request will not be cleared, then you can you can click on the button mm, so that you will not uh, clear the previous uh, records on navigation. Uh, so if we make another request, uh, requests were not cleared, and the new request uh, listed down. After a separate horizontal line, let's see uh, exist get request. So we have to change the request type to get. Uh, since it's a uh, get request, we don't need request body header. Get request sends data in the query string. So we have to add the data. On the URL, we don't need to send the data using the send method. Let's do something fancy. Uh, place a breakpoint on the server side code to see what happened on the server uh, when the request run on the server. Okay, here's uh, the server side code, and let's run the application and browser you can see uh, when the Ajax request uh, fired raised by the JavaScript code the request sent to the server and the server get the request and break on the breakpoint you can see the name contains the value me and the location uh, contains the value data. Let's go ahead. Uh, compile the code on line by line. And here's our date time. We concatenated uh, the whole things on single string and returned to the address request. And here's the result. Let's see again what captured on the network traffic. Uh, let's make the request again in the server. So it's the result, and here the URL. The data uh, the URL contains the key value here data. Uh, let's see the request in details. Request header. Uh, because body contains nothing, because the data sent by the URL, uh, the body contains nothing. The response header from the server is here, and the response body, and the body cooking is here, and here is the timing of the request. So you can see that there here is only one start step, uh, the post method. Had two start steps. Let's do some error on the Ajax request, and that's why you are learning uh, the monitoring and debugging Ajax request. So let's go to, go to the code. Uh, let's type the URL. Wrong. Now, let's run the code on the browser. Yeah, here it is. The response from the server. The server didn't find 
the page or control action so it sends this little message this channel your message uh, it saves the server you in application the main your message is here the resource cannot be found it means uh, for or for you here's the for for you response body contains the email uh, you can see that this uh, contains a full HTML code uh, but the Firebug or Firefox uh, um, tab to see the response on HTML so let's make another type of hero Let's change the code. Let's try to sorry. Let's try to parse the name to a which is a value. Let's draw an exception. See it. Where you can see the error method, it says uh, the input string was not in correct format. In the input string that means uh, we send an input to the parse method, but it's not uh, in correct format to parse as an integer value. But if you look at the response body of that request. Uh, it contains the okay uh, that's it so here it is here's the debugging and monitoring ajax requests on ilab